This is a new episode of our series 5G Explained. In this video, we discuss signals that are available in 5G NR to support channel sounding and channel estimation. First, we will define channel sounding. Then we'll look at channel state information reference signals, or CSIRS, which support channel sounding on the downlink, and sounding reference signals, or SRS, which are the equivalent on the uplink. Much of 5G NR relies on beamforming to provide sufficient SINR at the reception site, in particular for millimeter wave transmission. But beamforming requires knowledge of the propagation channel. The propagation channel depends on the transmit frequency. Therefore, if uplink and downlink operate on two different frequencies, as is the case in FDD, there is no choice but relying on the receiver to communicate information about the channel back to the transmitter. This is the case at the bottom right. In the case of TDD, where the uplink and downlink share the same transmit frequency, it is possible, on the other hand, to estimate the downlink channel based on measurements on uplink transmission for the opposite. Whichever case is applicable, special sounding signals are relied upon for both directions. Those sounding signals are the CSIRS for downlink and SRS for uplink. CSIRS are not a new concept in 5G NR. They have been used in LTE for the same purpose, although the detail of their specification is different in 5G NR. CSIRS are transmitted within a bandwidth part as anything that a UE is expected to listen to. They help with beamforming, interference estimation, as well as coordinated multipoint transmission, or COMP. As a side note, there is one subtype of CSIRS called Tracking Reference Signal, or TRS, not to be confused with Phase Tracking Reference Signals, or PTRS, with slightly different goals and characteristics. We'll mention it again a little later. CSIRS are limited to a bandwidth part but they are not limited to the subset of bandwidth part that contains data for the UE, if there is even data transmission. Therefore, they provide information about the channel across possibly the whole bandwidth part, as opposed to DMRS associated with data transmission. Let's talk about the frequency and time domain characteristics of CSIRS, starting with the frequency domain. There are two main types of CSIRS in the frequency domain, one and one half. With density one, CSIRS are present in every resource block. With half density, they are present in every other resource block. The third type, very dense in the frequency domain with density three, is called tracking reference signal, as mentioned earlier. This type of CSIRS is single port whereas the other CSIRS can support up to 32 antenna ports for MIMO application. Here is a concrete view of density one versus density one half. As can be seen with density one, CSIRS is present in every resource block, whereas CSIRS is present in one half of resource blocks on the right. CSIRS occurrences in the time domain can be scheduled in three different ways periodic, semi-persistent, and aperiodic. Periodic transmission is what it sounds like, and the period is between 4 and 640 slots. Semi-persistent is the same as periodic, but transmission can be momentarily suspended. Aperiodic transmission happens without predefined schedule. You will have to be notified of such transmission with downlink control information, or DCI, the concept explained in another episode of this 5G Explained series. So far, we have assumed that those CSIRS are known symbols sent by the transmitter to help with channel estimation or tracking. This is indeed the case, at least for those regular or non-zero power CSIRS. The standard also defines zero power CSIRS, which are zero valued reference signals. The point about those symbols is that the UE is specifically told thereby that the G node B is not transmitting anything at those locations in time and frequency. 
As a result, the UE can assume that any received power at those locations is due to interference. This is why we mentioned earlier that CSIRS can be used for interference measurement. This is an example of non-zero power and zero power CSIRS and how you can set them up with MathWorks 5G Toolbox. Here, the non-zero power CSIRS have a period of five slots with offset one, meaning that they are present in slots one, six, 11, and so forth. They have a dot five or one half density, meaning that they are present in every other resource block and they are located in symbol one of the slot. They are shown in yellow. The zero power CSIRS have a period of 10 slots with offset one, meaning they are present in slots one, 11, 21, and so forth. They have a frequency density of one, which means they are in every resource block, and the symbol location is six, that's shown in blue. Now we want to discuss what the UE does with CSIRS it receives. The UE can determine the channel estimate, but filling it back to the GNOB would take a lot of bandwidth because the channel varies across the measurement bandwidth. Therefore, the feedback is not directly the channel estimate, but instead the index among a set of matrices that would provide the best beamforming. This set of matrices is predefined in the standard. The larger the set, the more accurate the representation, but the costlier the feedback. Two types of codebooks are defined in the standard. Type 1 is coarser and hence cheaper to signal, whereas type 2 is more extensive. Type 1 is considered adequate for single user transmissions when beamforming doesn't have to be quite as accurate. For multi-user transmission, however, the GNOB will want to target each user more precisely and may request type 2 feedback. Note that in either case, the GNODB is not bound to use the suggested beamforming matrix for downing transmission to this UE. CSI reports can be carried by the data or control channels, PUSCH or PUCCH, depending on the configuration and the complexity of the report. The table on this slide can be summarized very simply by stating that the type of report that can be associated with a type of CSI is what makes common sense. For example, an aperiodic CSIRS can only be reported with an aperiodic report. Or on the other extreme, reports for a periodic CSIRS pattern can be of any type, periodic, semi-periodic, or aperiodic, as reports don't have to be always sent back. The equivalent of CSIRS on the uplink is the sounding reference signal. SRS are sent by the UE to aid in channel estimation. They are sent over one, two, or four antenna ports. The same mechanism was already used for LTE, but SRS in 5G NR are a lot more flexible. The duration for SRS is one, two, or four symbols, as opposed to always one in LTE. There is a COM structure with two or four spacing in frequency, as opposed to always two in LTE. The SRS is not necessarily in the last symbol of the slot. And the bandwidth covered can be anything between one and 272 resource blocks. This slide illustrates the flexibility of SRS in 5G and R. We can see a two symbol SRS as N symb equal two, the number of symbols can be one, two, or four. Every fourth subcarrier is used as specified by KTC equal four. There are two possible patterns, every other or every fourth subcarrier, corresponding to KTC equal two and four, respectively. The first symbol occupied by the SRS is specified by the I offset value. I offset can be between zero and five. And obviously, it must be such that all n -SIM SRS symbols fit within that slot. Finally, the spectral extent of the SRS can be anywhere from 1 through 272 resource blocks as per the MSRS parameter. 
We have seen how CSI reports are sent back to the GNODB by the UE. Correspondingly, for the uplink direction, information resulting from SRS reception at the GNODB can result in scheduling decisions as well as beamforming or precoding selection for the uplink. As you may remember from the 5G Explained episode about downlink control information or DCI, uplink precoding is one of the pieces of information that gets communicated to the UE via DCI. This information is part of the uplink grant, which comes as a response to a scheduling request from the UE. As a final remark, one may wonder whether one could use the MRS for channel sounding as opposed to CSIRS and SRS. There are many reasons why this is not possible. To name just a few, the MRS do not extend beyond the current data transmission allocation. They are not available when there is no data transmission. Also, the MRS are in support of the current transmission configuration. They don't enable to look at other options for later scheduling, such as using more antenna ports than in the current transmission, if there even is a current transmission. This concludes this episode of the 5G Explained series on signals for channel sounding.